But doing my research, I came to the realization that most ghosts are from the 1800s. Like anytime you hear about a ghost story, it's usually like, oh yeah, that's uh, Mabel. <laughs> she died in 1806 from seasonal allergies. <laughs> you don't ever hear about a 1997 ghost. You've never heard the story. Oh yeah, that's uh, Stacy. <laughs> she died in 97. She was crossing the street while checking her pager. <laughs> I like scary movies. You guys like scary movies? Yeah. yeah. Love scary movies. I mean, sometimes they're a little predictable, you know? Like you can always tell when the ghost is gonna come on the screen because the music changes. It turns into like creepy classical music or Johnny Cash. <laughs> but not if your ghost was Stacy. Nah, if Stacy was your ghost, she'd wake you up in the middle of the night with no scrubs. No scrubs. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Stacy's creepy. If I got to pick which kind of ghost I wanted to haunt me, I would pick a millennial ghost. A millennial ghost named Dylan. He has a man bun. When you're being haunted, your personal things go missing. So all my hair ties would disappear. <laughs> they say if you're being haunted by an evil spirit, people have reported the smell of something foul, like sulfur. But if Dylan was haunting you, you'd wake up to the smell of fresh roasted coffee beans. <laughs> Organic fair trade. <laughs> Could you imagine waking up every morning to the smell of coffee? And then you run to the kitchen? And there's never coffee. <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> or maybe it was a girl millennial ghost named Dylan. <laughs> she wears her hair in a messy bun. Yeah, I'd probably pick her to haunt me because she probably just forget to scare me because she was on her phone. <laughs> she just tweet me a boo emoji. <laughs> Hashtag scary. <laughs> Hashtag right behind you. <laughs> I grew up watching scary movies and scary TV shows. My favorite TV show growing up was Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> right? That was my show. And like, I would watch it when I was home alone by myself because that made it scarier. <laughs> as soon as that theme music started, whoo, forget it. I'm not going pee till my mom gets home. <laughs> Even now as an adult, if I'm home alone watching something scary on TV, and then I gotta walk all the way down the hallway to the bathroom, I'll start singing praise and worship songs <laughs> for protection. <laughs> Jesus loves me. This I know, <laughs> for the Bible tells. You gotta get aggressive. You gotta get aggressive with the ghost. You gotta let them know you ain't playing no games. <laughs> oh, you think this a game, ghost? Oh, you trying to scare me? Well, you didn't see me over here with my Merlot taking my communion. Blood of Christ! <laughs> Been touring for 15 years, and uh, my favorite thing to do on tour is eat good food. It's my favorite thing to do. 
Like, everywhere we go, we try to find the best food. Like, and we want to find that local, family-owned, you can only get this right here type of place. You know what I'm talking about? So everywhere we go, we get the best food. Except when we went to Birmingham, Alabama. I'll tell you what happened. We get to Birmingham, and I'm doing my thing where I'm just talking to people, asking people where we should go eat. Like, hey, where's the hot spot? Where do you go? I want to know. Let's go. This girl recommends a Mexican restaurant. I was like, oh, No, thank you. Because we're in Birmingham, Alabama. I don't want Mexican food here. Like, we're in the South. Take me where I can get some Southern food, like biscuits and gravy, shrimp and grits, butter on butter. <laughs> but she said a Mexican restaurant. I was like, ooh, hard pass. Thanks, though. <laughs> but then I started thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? Hold on. Let me not judge, OK? Because people know their city. They know what's up where they live. They know where to eat. They know the hot spots. I was like, you know what? Let me not judge. Also, let me not limit my people because maybe one of my people done immigrated over here. <laughs> and maybe when he got here, he was like, keep going. Don't look back. <laughs> By the time he looked up, he's in Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> Is this California? <laughs> nah, you went the wrong way. Anyway. <laughs> but maybe he decided to stay. And maybe he started by making tacos on a little taco cart right outside of the nightclub. Everybody starts hearing about Jaime's tacos. <laughs> hey, have you ever had one of Jaime's tacos? Those are the best tacos I've ever had in my life. Jaime's tacos, Jaime's tacos. Maybe he is so popular, he opens up a taco truck. Hey, have you ever been to Jaime's taco truck? Those are the best tacos I've ever had in my life. Jaime's tacos, Jaime's tacos. Maybe he gets so popular, he opens up his very first restaurant in Birmingham, Alabama, Jamie's. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Let me not judge. Let me go ahead and check out this Mexican restaurant in Birmingham, Alabama. So we get there. As soon as I walk in, I notice that it's all white people, not one Mexican. <laughs> Strike one. <laughs> Listen, this is not about white people. This is about the rules of restaurants. <laughs> Whatever restaurant you go to, whatever culture that restaurant is, if you do not see the people of that culture in that restaurant, leave. <laughs> because if they won't even co-sign on this, it's not legit. <laughs> if you go to a Chinese restaurant and you don't see no Chinese people, girl, bye. Even if you see one Chinese guy, listen real close, he might be adopted, don't fall for it. <laughs> you need two cosigns in that situation. <laughs> I walk into this Mexican restaurant, I didn't have no cosigns. I became the cosign. <laughs> I was like, oh man, we already drove all the way out here. Let's just give it a shot. We sit down. They charged me for chips and salsa. <laughs> Strike two. Everybody knows that chips and salsa are free. <laughs> it is our gift to humanity. <laughs> oh, but not in Birmingham, Alabama. Chips and salsa, that'll be 275. Excuse me, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, is Jaime here? <laughs> if that wasn't bad enough, this next moment is where my life changed. I'm reading the menu, and it says they have guacamole and seasonal guacamole. I said, seasonal guacamole? <laughs> What's that? Are there any Mexican people here tonight? 
Okay, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of seasonal guacamole? Me either. I never heard of it in my whole Mexican life. I didn't know what it was. I had to ask my waiter. I said, um, excuse me, sir. Yeah, Chad. Let me ask you a question. Uh, what comes in the seasonal guacamole? And he says, walnuts and candied apples. <laughs> Y'all, I was personally offended. I could not believe they were doing this to my people. I knew I needed to say something, I needed to speak up. This was my si se puede moment. But we were in the South, so the only words that would come out of my mouth were, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You take that guacamole back to the pit where it came from. I do not receive that. Get under my feet, devil.